It has been a scorcher this week, as we know, and when you factor in the Humidex, it felt like over 40 degrees Celsius in Toronto today. And that's having a big impact on our environment, of course. That's why we have City News Chief Meteorologist Natasha Ramsa high with us. It's not just Toronto. We have to put this in context. This yeah. is a global issue. Yes. We're seeing the effects of climate change. And here's the thing, we're not tiptoeing around what it is. We're calling it climate change. We're calling it human-induced climate change. And really, the atmosphere in our climate is warming. We've had a 1.3 degree temperature uh, increase since 1850. That sounds small, right? But it can make a huge impact globally. In fact, if you look at the 30-year period from 1991, uh, now this is last year, but 91 to 2020, 78 heat waves, 78% of the global population dealing with heat. That's 6.3 billion people. And of course, we know that heat is the uh, deadliest weather-related hazard on Earth, right? And let me show you one more. How many people are we talking? I've just pulled a couple of stats from British Columbia from 2021 and 20, uh, 2009. Hundreds of people, and we all remember the European heat wave in 2003, tens of thousands of people uh, that were killed with that heat wave. People dying, but there's also a yep. lot of health-related issues as a result of this yep. as well. We, we make our way around. We start to feel it. We do start to feel it, and it impacts different people, different age groups, and even sort of the same person living in a city. And I'll show you that in a second, but let's talk about kids for a second. You know, babies can't tell you, yes, I've had six of my eight glasses of water today, so hydration is key. Um, kids are uh, impacted because, of course, athletics and athletes, they're sometimes they don't get the breaks if they're outside, so the risk of heat illness increases. And then my own kids, too, this week in the Toronto heat wave today, they are writing exams on a third floor of a non-air conditioned school. So it really impacts your mental and physical ability because, you know, also we focus a lot on daytime temperatures, the 30, the 33, the humid X of 40. In reality, nighttime temperatures have been warming faster than the day. And so that means mm. the ability to cool the core body temperature uh, becomes really uh, hard to do, but also let's talk about downtown Toronto. So imagine a place with very few trees. So let's take Parkdale, St. Jamestown versus Rosedale or High Park. There can be a five to eight degree temperature difference, not just during the day, but also at night. And that concrete area sees those higher temperatures, but you get out to where the trees are and those temps come down. And so it's unequal as well across the population. And that makes your job that much more difficult when you're trying to tell everyone in the city, this is yes. how hot it's going to be because yes. it's different for everybody. Day-to-day -day concerns, obviously, uh, yeah. there's things that we need to take care of as well. I mean, every year we have to say this, and I hate that I have to, but remember when that air temperature is 30 degrees, that's how hot the inside of your vehicle can heat up. It takes minutes. So again, reminder to keep pets and people out of uh, vehicles. And then the one that we don't talk about a lot is your furry friends when you're taking them for a walk, yeah. right? Yesterday it was 35 degrees in Toronto. Those are the temperatures of the surfaces that your little furry friends are walking on. And at 50 degrees, pets paws can burn in five minutes asphalt 60 degrees they can burn in one minute so you, I think you were talking about winter time how you put uh, paws yeah, on them or normally little put the boots shoes. on because it's yeah. so cold and never really consider that we need to do this at this time of year well. exactly we, we also see as we've seen this week uh, these extreme storms that roll through as a result of yeah. that heat how does that work so Hotter air holds more water. That's just the nature of, of, of the science of the way that air works. So as temperature goes up, the ability of that uh, cloud and that air to hold moisture increases. So we're going to see more extreme uh, events and more extreme storms. Last week in Florida, uh, you saw all the flooding down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, a few years ago in Toronto, everybody remembers the GO train underwater and the Lamborghini underwater. So these extreme heavy downpours, uh, flooding, there it is right there. This is becoming more frequent with day-to-day -day storms. So the one in a hundred year storm now becomes a, a one in 10 year storm. And this is what we're seeing, not just in Toronto, but globally. Thanks as always. A lot of great insight. Natasha Ramsa, hi, thanks for being here. Thank you.